Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel, and today I'm on my main backpacking trip of this fall. And sorry about all the huffing and puffing. I just came up this big hill. It's evening out now, so I figured might as well say the opening words now. Whew. I'm on UKK Trail, or as it's known in Finnish, UKK Reitti. And to be exact, UKK Reitti starts from, I believe, Koli National Park and heads up north many hundreds of kilometers. Here's an old campfire site. I started this trip now from a town called Pintamo, just south of Suete National Park. And I'm heading south for the next six or seven days, covering roughly 170 kilometers or so. And that's a bit over 100 miles for you Brits and Americans. It should be a nice and interesting week ahead, hiking one trail for the whole time. The trail is marked with these paint blue markings, as well as these quite nice signs. As it says, you can go either way, and that's where we're going right now, heading southbound. For a trail like this that goes on for hundreds of kilometers, there's bound to be places where it's like narrow forest trails, like where I started and some gravel roads and forest roads in between, and so forth. That's interesting. See that? That's one of the reasons why I chose this western route instead of the eastern one. The eastern one is a bit more popular and I've actually hiked or backpacked a short section of it back in 2012. But this western one is has a lot of... Well, these are not fells, they are called var in Finnish, which is a hilltop that is that is still covered with trees once you go a bit further up north sorry further up north so that way the fells are actually the hill, hills and hilltops that are not covered with trees anymore so they are above the tree line but anyway there's quite a bit of I don't know if you guys can see over there in the horizon but quite a bit of hills, so a good amount of climbing up and going down, so a lot of interesting terrain and should be better views, better sights as well. Of course, it might be a bit more challenging, especially this section that I chose from Pintamo down south to Hyrensalmi. This should have all the highest peaks, biggest climbs and so forth on this, this trail. And uh, I think that's definitely makes it more challenging, more interesting. And uh, I would imagine places themselves are really something to, something to behold, something to be seen and something that really stays in my mind years to come.
look at this color. I really wish I hadn't forgotten my gators at home. They were on my packing list, but for some reason I did not pack them. And I knew that this trail would be very wet. It is end of September after all, so it is quite rainy. And uh, even if it's not raining right now, the forest on these trails will stay wet. I, I believe until until the snow comes so at least I can try to hang my pants every night and hope that they dry up a bit during the night or if I have fire then try to dry them up by the fire as well. It's not bothering but you know it's not ideal either. Completely my own own mistake. I had them on my list, but for some reason didn't pack them. Everyone makes mistakes, I guess. Huh. First duck boards of this trip. Quite slippery, I must say. Hmm. Well, this is worrying. As you can see, there's blue marks. The trail goes there. But there are no duck boards, as far as I can tell. But this seems to be walkable. But I will take out my hiking pole anyway. Just in case. Hmm. Look at that. I hope I can make it across. Halfway through. Definitely, I do not recommend this for anyone. I try to avoid this as much as I can myself. The first lean to shelter is just across this bog. I just have to place all my steps very carefully. Follow the trees. Usually if there's a tree or something like that, then it's a bit more solid underneath. But I can see tracks that at least reindeer or something like that has been moving through. So I'm feeling, feeling confident about this. If I would not be 100% sure that I can do this, I would not. I would then circle around if possible. All right, back on solid ground. And I said, first lean to here. Harpoon Oya, but the one that I'm aiming for is actually this, Pikkulambi. Still ten and a half kilometers to go. So I'm not taking a long break here. Because as you can probably tell, it's definitely not a midday anymore. I actually spent most of today traveling to the trailhead first by train and then by bus that's why I got to start fairly late in fact only at around three and it's now just coming five in the afternoon which means that I still have ten and a half kilometers to go and um, I think the sun sets around half past seven. Most likely that the final kilometers I will have to go with the headlamp on. 
but of course I try to now keep a good pace so that I wouldn't have to hike a long distance with just headlamp. All right, so that was just a quick snack break and fixing the socks and now full blast again. Ahead we go. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I try to turn it up when editing all the birds singing. It's quite quite loud in person. Yes, you can believe how happy I am. Not just because I made it to this river crossing while there is still daylight, but the fact that there is still this boat that I can use to cross, because that was not certain. I have another crossing tomorrow, not as big as this, but there's also kind of a boat ferry type of thing. And uh, I managed to secure that one, contact the right person. And I did say also to him that, hey, I'm crossing this river the day before, but I'm not sure if he got that. So I was very skeptical and, and, and frankly a bit scared. What would I do if this would not be here? Anyway, now onto the boat and across. Yes. Boat is back on water. I'm back on trail. Now let's just let's just, just figure out what's the next move. Apparently, 300 meters this road, and then right hand turn to back to forest again. There's a blue mark here, the trail actually comes through here, through this, through this area. Well, there is actually no trail, I have just been following those blue marks and sun is setting right now, there behind me. So this is the situation right now. It's not terribly far off on the camera. If I come really close to the trees, I can see the blue mark and there's somewhat visible path on the ground that I've been now following after the deforested areas. I can tell you that the sky isn't as bright as it is in the screen, but at the same time, the forest isn't as dark as it is there either. But I will stop. But I will stop filming now and try to make my way to the lean to shelter and I will see you guys there. And here we are. Not long after I said that I will stop filming and bring you guys back. Pikkulampi quite literally means a little pond. And here's the lean-to shelter, and not sure you probably cannot see it, but there is the pond. There's a wood shed. Let's see what the magic of GPS says. So today 20.15 kilometers, 
just about what I estimated. And uh, moving average speed was 5.8 kilometers per hour. And uh, I mentioned this because it is a lot more than what I would usually consider to be like nice backpacking pace. But that was simply due to the fact that I had so late start, which I couldn't influence. And uh, I still had 20 kilometers to go, including one water crossing with a boat. So I, I really, during all the forest roads and things like that, I really uh, tried to maintain a quite high pace. Now quickly some food and then I will try to go to bed quite early early and then tomorrow morning we'll get a good look at this place and start off the day properly with coffee and porridge as always. What our first day. So I have my water boiling, sleep system, everything ready. I set that up first because I want to get some loft into the sleeping bag. <laughs> Rucksack exploded as always. And food here ready to get going. So dehydrated minced beef that I made myself. Then we have some mashed potatoes and bacon. A bit of cheese and some dry, what is it called? Dried, dry bread. I don't know. Doesn't weigh anything, although it is a bit bulky. It's still a good way to get some some fibers in. And I did look at the firewood situation and it looks pretty bad. There's not much here. And uh, pretty much the same thing here. Two bigger pieces, but I don't see an axe. So I guess that's a no-go then for tomorrow morning. These are not maintained by the government, but instead some local organizations or something like that. At least this one, as far as I can tell. I put a merino wool jacket underneath. This is my warm layer for this trip. Kelly clothing Luppo. More on that later. And a merino wool tube scarf on head. And as always, I've been wearing merino wool socks throughout the day. And be it summer or winter, always thick wool socks when going to bed. And these are actually also merino wool made by my lovely wife. Thank you. Feeling really hungry. This is my first proper hot meal of the day. I've had a little bit of this, a little bit of that during the day. But it feels good to get something warm and proper now. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Like actual mashed potatoes. So there's seven of these in one package. I have two of these. So, two pieces per day, one per meal. Mm. All right, everything is there, hanging or drying and ready for morning. And I am ready for the night. Good, first day. Tomorrow, I think a bit longer distance, but at the same time, probably with slower pace. So, should be good. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, folks.
quiet and still morning. This is why I like a hydration bladder. I can fill it up in the morning. It has a three liter capacity. It means that I don't have to worry about water during the whole day. I can drink all the time when I'm walking. And most likely I will also use water directly from this for my lunch as well. So for lunch places, I don't have to stop somewhere where there is water available to rehydrate my food. I'm using a Katadin Hiker Pro filter, pump filter that I got a bit over a year ago. It's a bit bulky, but I like it. It's fast, efficient. It has that carbon filter inside as well to neutralize the taste a bit. All in all, I'd be really happy with this performance. And of course, for morning coffee and porridge, we don't need filtered water anyway, so. There we go. All right, as always, first, porridge. So my yesterday's dinner bag will work as my plate. Mm, maybe that amount. And then let's put in some coffee. So what I have for breakfast on this trip is these little bags. So inside of this is the same amount of oatmeal or porridge as always. But this time I've also added one deciliter of protein powder with that and just made these handy serving packages out of it. And I added the powder because I figured I could use more calories anyway during my trips and these are really easy and somewhat lightweight to not just get some of those much needed calories, but also to make the morning oatmeal a bit more interesting. I think I have a couple of different powders in this and I think judging by the color of the first one, looks like I'm having chocolate porridge this morning. And the taste is really good. I also have, <clears throat> once again, some Finnish honey. And actually, I'm thinking that I'm not mixing this with porridge this time, but with my coffee. And this is also pretty much the sweetest thing that I have. I'm not a big fan of chocolate bars and things like that, so that's why I don't have those, but I carry this instead. Well, it started raining while I was finishing up my breakfast and I've been now packing my things up in the shelter and still one more important thing to do and that is writing something to the guest book. Last time someone was here was 24th, it's now 26th, so a day before yesterday. Someone was spending their birthday here. That's nice. Anyway, I will sign this and put everything together and poncho on and start today's journey.
spotted an interesting place called Kello Tori. So clock market. I don't know if there has been some sort of history or information about this place. But it's pretty much now just this table. Remnants of something else, perhaps the old table. So it looks like the major rains are now past me, which means that I can take this poncho off. There might be still a bit of something coming later on, but we'll see that then. Now I know some of you might think that wouldn't it bother me now that my sleeves and of course Pants are a bit wet because I'm using poncho and not other rain gear, but I guess in the end it comes down to what you have gotten used to. And for me, I've been using gaiters and a poncho since my military service, so over a decade now. And uh, it's not breathable, but there is plenty of airflow. So that's why I like it. It's super fast and easy to put on. It protects not just your core, which is the most important part, of course, but your backpack and gear. So you don't need a separate uh, rain cover for the pack and things like that. So I think it is fairly convenient and your body heat will then dry out the sleeves and things like that. So. It works for me, but perhaps not for everyone. All right, time to move on. All I can think of when looking at this trail right now, how great this would be for a fat bike. Amazing terrain. But all in all, I would not recommend this trail for bikepacking, at least based on what I've seen yesterday. At least was quite tough with all the all the areas where markings were gone and where the trees were cut and things like that would be practically impossible with a bike. But then at times it's just unbelievably cool. Cool trails or single tracks if you prefer. This trail is old, very old. I guess this rock is as good place as any to sit down and have some lunch.
and it started raining again. Raining again, but it shouldn't last as long as it did in the morning. It's 13 past 12, so good time for lunch. Unfortunately, not a lot of natural cover, but I'm just going to sit with this and, and uh, suck it up. Well, I had to change location a bit because there was moose crap by that rock, but it is what it is. Anyway, this is better in every sense. It's slightly raining all the time. It comes and goes, but never stops fully. So this is why I recommend GPS on this trail. You can see that I've been going zigzagging on top of the trail on both sides, but there hasn't been any markings, any visible trail either, until I found this. And now again, they seem to continue up there. But down there, there was a clear path that this trail followed. And at some point I noticed, hmm, I don't see any blue marks anymore. I wonder where that is. Open up GPS. Okay, I need to correct a bit. I correct. I look at the GPS. I walk right on top of the trail and there's nothing. There's nothing in the ground, nothing in the trees. And I keep doing that on top of the trail on both sides, trying to find where it is. And it took a while and a bit of a loop now coming to this, this little hillside. So definitely Definitely a GPS or something is recommended on this trail. Now that would be a pretty cool shelter. Perfect. Here's one little lean to shelter called Kirkkaan Heteen Laavu. And uh, not going to stay here, but it has gained its name from this place, Kirkas Hete, which is 90 meters that way. And that should be a pretty crystal clear natural spring as far as I know. So I'm leaving my backpack here and going to check it out and take a quick detour. You can actually see to the bottom, I don't know, there's some kind of bubbles coming right there from the bottom. So this is very hard to estimate how Steep it is. It's kind of scary to walk, to be honest. I would imagine that is maybe three, four meters, something like that, in depth. Quite cool spot. So, although I am of course, trying to gain, you know, decent kilometers each day. It's still not out of the question to 
visit any local sites and things like that. I'm now starting to be quite close to the next river crossing, but before that there should be another place to check out first. Hopefully with some decent views, but we'll see about that. I'll bring you guys back when I get there. All right, here we are. Ohta kulju slash iso ohta lampi. I was hoping for a bit clearer view down here, but let's see. Well, there it is. I think you can barely see it. Iso ohta lampi. Deer flies. But now, back to the trail on towards the water crossing. Then, after that, I believe I'm fairly close to today's um, endpoint or goal. Pikku flammin. No, not pikku lammin laavu, only lammin laavu. Okay, here I am. Korpijoki. Pretty significant river as well. Ooh. It says that the ferry boat is until the last day of this month. And it's now, what, 26th? Yeah, 26th. <laughs> All right, let's find ourselves a boat. It's a bit scary spot to stand, because this is very slippery. So I'm <laughs> holding with my other hand over here. And using just my one hand to pull. There she is. <laughs> A bit of water, apparently, from the rain. The rope is pulling in one direction, and then this current is pulling to the other direction. So <laughs> it's it's quite interesting. Aye. We're making progress. Look at that. Pretty cool. Whew. Made it. Now I just need to get my stuff from here and then I will push it back. Back there. There you go. Look at that current. Super strong. All right, this is it. Only lumpy, but look at that. It's a ground floor. So, I was thinking that the next lean to shelter, let's see if it's... Uh, well, it's not visible here. It's just around here, only two kilometers or so away. And it's now 18 past five. So I'm going to go those couple of extra kilometers because I'm also fairly sure that it is better equipped than this. That's kind of a sad. I, I think that's the first lean-to that I've seen with the ground floor. That's not much better than just setting up my own tarp. At least it would have this pond for a good water source, but... Anyway, I'll keep going still for a couple of kilometers. I'm feeling good. It's not raining. 
and uh, there's still daylight left, so why not? Hmm. Good thing I have long legs. I guess I can make this one. And this is why I have hiking pole and boom! Over we go. And there is our destination. Oh yeah. Yes. As I suspected. A lot better place. And maintained by our government with our hard earned and paid tax money, which means there's a toilet and plenty of firewood and an axe. Let's see still today's stats. Looks like 31 kilometers, not bad. Total time eight hours, 53 minutes. And I'm so happy I came here and did not stay in the previous one, because if I had, I would have had a very wet and miserable evening and morning, and I would have walked past here anyway, and when I would have seen this place, man. But anyway, I will start making fire, and uh, I'll bring you guys back then. So right after I set up the fire, two different groups came here for a quick snack break and such. I have now my socks, gloves and shoes drying out. Shoes are pretty far away. It might look on the camera that they are close, but they are really not. I don't know if they actually dry here at all, but every little bit helps. And yes, I'm barefooted. Not a problem for me. I think I'll put some bigger pieces of wood here and just gently dry things out. Unfortunately, I just checked the weather forecast and it looks like tomorrow will be exactly the same as today. So rain in the morning and then cloudy afternoon. So that's why I already went with the headlamp to the stream, filled my hydration bladder and I also took water for breakfast. So everything is ready and, and I have some firewood already set up there. I am going to make fire tomorrow morning, even though it's it's supposed to rain, just to save my own fuel a bit. It's already coming nine o'clock soon, so definitely going to bed right now. And um, happy that I got some of my gear a bit drier. Definitely helps for tomorrow. But we'll see what tomorrow will bring. Good morning, folks. As you can probably see and maybe hear, it is still raining a bit. And it did rain a lot during the earlier morning hours. There's quite a bit of water accumulated here. But thanks to my preparations from last night, I got the fire going quite easily. Now I have my kettle there, so we can start off this morning properly. Last time that I got some signal, I checked the weather forecast and according to it, rain should stop in an hour. And uh, I've also noticed that the wind is quite a lot stronger than it has been the past two days. And that's a good thing because right now, the start of today, I will climb up to a place where there should be quite nice visibility and nice nice views. And actually the first maybe five kilometers or so I will be walking on a ridge line. I'm really looking forward to that and the wind helps because it clears the fog. But I just hope that the wind doesn't bring more rain. I've given up all hope that at any point of this trip the forest would be relatively dry. I guess this is it. It's going to be very, very wet. Mm, next five days still.
I have now started my slow but long climb to the first hilltop of today. Judging by the maps, I think this is going to be the theme of today. A lot of climbing up and then coming back down and then climbing back up and going back down. You actually cannot see the bottom where I started. I cannot see the top yet either. Not bad. Quite cool trail, I have to say. This section is actually part of a loop called Cometon Loop. Cometon Kierros, I think it is in Finnish. And uh, it's a seven kilometer loop, which this UKK trail follows roughly half of it. It separates on that southern end, and then the Cometon Loop comes down somewhere, or comes back rather, somewhere down there. Quite, quite nice start for today. The trail has now separated from the short loop, but as you can see from the markings on these trees, there's another trail sharing this path. So blue is always UKK trail and this yellowish color is called uh, now I almost forgot it. See any polko perhaps. So mushroom trail. And I think I read somewhere that mushroom trail is roughly 21 kilometers. And I'm assuming that mushroom trail and UKK trail go hand in hand for most, if not all of that. 21 kilometers. The trail is fairly good, at least it is visible, and that's probably thanks to sharing this section with the mushroom trail, which I assume is a bit more travel than the UK gay trail alone. At this point, I've lost count how many miles I have crossed. But that doesn't really matter. I suspect there's still plenty more to go. And this one has a nice little pond as well.
Oh. Oh. That must have been one of the hardest 15 kilometers of my life. As I suspected, immediately after UKK Trail, heading away from the shared trails, the other loops, it got really bad, really fast. And managed to break my only hiking pole. The last five kilometers have been really slow. And I've climbed today, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would say I've climbed ten hills all in all in 15 kilometers. All right, but now I definitely need some food and let's talk more after this. So I slipped and broke my fall with the pole and at the same time broke the pole as well, but I've now twisted it a bit with Leatherman and I think I can get it back in. I managed to kind of fix it. It's still bent and I'm missing this much. And as I'm a fairly tall guy, this is now way too short. There's still at least, I think I checked three very big hills, bigger than what I've climbed today. So three big ones at least is still coming. And everything is so slippery, rocks, roots, duck boards, but this is a lifeline. Note to self, every time bring two poles, even if you're just going to use one. I mixed the cheese now with the food. Excellent, excellent choice. But yeah, the first 10 kilometers or so, although challenging because of the hills, the trail was in excellent condition. There were some really interesting sections. I practically hiked through fog most of the time. As soon as the UKK trail took its own turn, absolutely no trail maintenance. A lot of fallen trees on top of the trail, very slow going. This is now the fourth lean-to today. I haven't stayed in the previous ones, but just walked past and checked them out. And the first one was a bit off trail, so I didn't visit it, but the next two, so previous two, neither of them had any firewood and that's quite worrying. I haven't checked this one yet, if there is anything in the back. I would suppose there is because there is one sausage <laughs> left by someone there and firewood underneath. And I can see it from the guest book that someone has been here 23rd and it's now 27th. So maybe there is something, but still not very promising in terms of if there is going to be any firewood in the lean to that I'm heading. I can see a sign from here that says Markon Palo, 16 kilometers, and I believe that's the name of the lean to where I'm heading. So, still similar distance to go to what I've done now, but this morning just has been very slow. And then uphill again. On top the first big hill and even with this wind, the fog still hasn't cleared up. So it's just not the forest that is completely wet, but it's the very air itself. Absolutely no impact with this from this wind. Hmm. Very strange. Now that's a big anthill. A few times during this whole trail that I'm doing, this section of UKK, 
there's these straight lines on the map where the trail goes and I thought that they have to be some kind of forest roads or something but no this is one of them straight corridor almost goes in between and uh, it will take me down of this hill and up the next one without taking any significant turns well as if this day would not have been already tough enough i just fell through duck boards although <laughs> my legs look pretty much similar but it was this one that went through so <sighs> There's nothing else to do now than keep walking. I'm not going to change my socks. That would be completely useless because the boot is now completely wet. I'm just going to make sure that these are properly adjusted and then boot back on. Have to keep on walking to keep blood pumping to the feet and make sure that feet don't get too cold but yeah the duck boards now on this section have been at times completely invisible there's so much moss and other plants growing on top of them that you just have to guess where they go and I did step on a duck board I didn't miss it just cracked under me. All right, let's continue. All right, I'm finally getting off from the biggest hill of today. I started climbing it after my feet went through the, or one feet went through the duck boards. And I wanted to talk to you guys a bit I've hiked now 23.6 kilometers and it's almost five o'clock. Clearly I underestimated how hard today would be. Because yesterday I think after five I was already almost at the lean to and I did 31 kilometers yesterday. For me to now make it to the lean to shelter well there is still some daylight i will have to stay on this road and not turn left soon when the trail hits the forest again i will have to walk on this road and uh, try to catch up some of that lost time clearly i'm not happy about this call it cheating call it whatever you want but um it's the only way i can do it Lean to offers too many benefits. Possibly the well, the possibility of making a fire if there is firewood and just sleeping off the wet ground is something that I I really need at this point. I do have a tarp with me, but it's it's not the same. It's not worth hitting the trail going in the, into that kind of forest. And then when it gets dark, set up the tarp and uh, try to spend a nice night there. So yeah, I guess it's down to my own safety and definitely my own well-being right now. I will put the camera down, make sure that I can get close enough following this road. Now I will bring you back then when I get to the lean to shelter. Well, this morning I did not expect anything like this, that's for sure. I made it. This says Markon Palo, but other places say Markon Puro. Let's see what's the good situation. Yes, at least there's action. Yep, looks good. 
and here's the lean to itself. This decision still doesn't sit completely right with me, but at the same time I know that it was a smart thing to do. It was the right thing to do. It's half past six and I've done 32 kilometers exact. So what was the five and a half kilometers by road and still I just barely made it. Around seven it gets already really dark so no rest for the wicket. I will have to start making a fire now immediately. Luckily there's some dry stuff here already, shouldn't be too hard. So fire is in check, warming my shoes and my toes and over there my socks and I went to pick actually water from down there and looks like tomorrow's trail starts by going that direction and over the stream which is actually just many meters of very very wet ground so it is what it is. But I have some hot water with honey charging GoPro, <laughs> blah, charging GoPro batteries. Food is coming up nicely. Bed is there ready for the man. Yeah, it was a really tough day. Huge underestimation on my part regarding how how hard the trail will be. But anyway, three days down, uh, 60, no, wait, what, 80 kilometers so far. So tomorrow, most likely, I will cross the 100 kilometer mark, which is exciting and nice. I will do a trick that I learned a while back one that I have never tried, which is that I will put my emergency hand warmers, which I always have in my kit bag, and drop them inside the boots for the night. Maybe that will dry them out a bit, because at least the other one for my right foot is in so bad shape or so wet so that it needs some sort of a miracle to dry out. I've never done this. I've only seen this being done. And I have to say, yep, these are at least warm. Yeah, I have to say I'm a bit skeptical if these actually do anything. Because in my opinion, these hand warmers are kind of nice to have, but I mean, they barely warm your hands, so let alone the, these boots. But I guess it's better than nothing. Well, that's it for tonight. I'll throw these socks that have been drying now into the sleeping bag to have them warm by the morning. Everything else should be ready for breakfast and coffee. Tomorrow, if my planning on my math is correct, it should be 25 kilometers or so, so a bit shorter, bit shorter day than today, but this one was supposed to be doable as well, so we can only see what tomorrow then brings. Personally, I would wish for some sunlight. That would be nice, nice for a change. But anyway, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, folks. Another windy but still cloudy morning on the UKK trail. Yesterday's troubles are now behind me and I will start a well start this day and hopefully something like 25 kilometers as a new man. This experiment with these toe warmers failed miserably. I woke up around 12 and tested my boots and these were already cold. So did not last the promised six hours and definitely did nothing to dry or even make my boots warmer. So I don't know if these were expired or what, but I don't know. It, it, it sounds cute on paper, but I will have to perhaps experiment with some other brands of these warmers. 
I'm really hoping that eventually this wind will sort out that cloud cover, which is absolutely complete at the moment. And we'll get to see some sun today. Would be a nice thing for a change. All right, and I'm on the move. Day four. And I just want to show you right off the bat the kind of terrain that I have to start start with. <laughs> So you can probably hear how wet this is and I think this is a snowmobile trail here, extremely wet. And uh, when we come over here, where the actual stream should be, where this, or at least it's marked on the maps, well, you can see the blue mark on the tree there. I guess the trail does go through here. Hmm. I don't see anything to step on. Is this somewhat solid? Yes. All right, let's test it out. Yep. And over here. Oh. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I have been dealing with this whole trip and why my boots are soaking wet. <laughs> I'm once again walking on the edge of the earth Great looking trail again. I think I'm supposed to cross that thing. Mm. Nope. <clears throat> Let's go and see how bad it looks. Well, pretty bad. You can see the blue marking there. Hmm. I will have to find a way to go around this. Oh, look at this place. I was hoping I could say now that I've gone past the 100 kilometer mark, but still just a couple of kilometers shy. But anyway, those are just numbers. Now I'll start preparing some lunch. Well, I guess I should prepare my feet first or let them dry at least for a moment. I think the trails are now going to get a lot better. Well, they have been pretty decent today. Certainly better than the average has been so far, but not, not as good as they were yesterday morning. And now I'm thinking that they will get better for the same reasons they were really good yesterday morning, because there are plenty of other loop trails and nature trails and things like that, all sharing the same paths. And I'm getting a bit closer to bigger cities. Actually, I just checked the road that I'm hearing is the main road between Puolanka and Hyrynsalmi. And Hyrynsalmi is actually the place where I'm going to finish this hike. So more people and um, which means that the trails will be most likely better 
which means that I will be faster and hopefully it means I will stay a bit more dry. And I think I found my new favorite tactical food pack, beef spaghetti bolognese. And I added, of course, my own dehydrated minced beef into it, so really nice. That is the sun. Oh, feels good and warm. I'm hearing running water and I think now also seeing some. So we're about to come to the next cool site on this trail. Well, this is not the site yet, but holy hell, what a scary bridge. I don't even know which way to approach this. So this is the river that I saw from up there. The trail follows it for some time. It is so loud. It's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen something like that in Finland. Five kilometers now to the next lean to shelter might be the last one for today or if the trail is good then I might go for one beyond that but absolutely no pressure we'll see then that was a cool place to celebrate kind of the first 100 kilometers of this trip. Very cool sight. Huh. Suddenly I came out of that <laughs> Finnish rainforest to this area that I don't know, somehow this resembles a lot of the trails in Lapland. I can see that there's also some smaller pond over there and this big one here. Very nice and 
dry trail for a change. So I'll take it. I hope that I would be by now out of these rainforests, but apparently not. Suvalampi lean to is just over there, barely visible. And Vääran Sarkat, three and a half kilometers to the next one. I thought that it will be only two kilometers, but three and a half. It's now 20 to five, so I do reckon that if I go now to Vääran Sarkat, I will be there by six, and that is completely accept acceptable. Oh, I need a drink. The trail for the past couple of kilometers has been this type of ridge line. It's easy to follow, it's dry for the most part, but the fact is that there is uphills and downhills and quite a lot of those. That's why even this five and a half kilometers from that waterfall to here has taken, well, I don't know how long, but longer, somehow it felt longer than I expected. But anyway, three and a half kilometers, I can do that in one hour and 20 minutes, even with some uphills. So, and it's then three and a half kilometers less for tomorrow. But yeah, I will get going, bring you guys back, when I get there and then I can actually talk a bit about in general the scheduling of this trip or how I've planned and what kind of distances and things like that and perhaps most importantly what is yet to come. So I know for a fact that tomorrow will be very different from the previous days and then the next two days are again very different from each other. So. But I'll get back to you once I get to Vääran Sarkat. So, oh, here we are. Vääran Lampi now, according to that sign over there. Oh. Well, my GPS has died at some point, but it's now, actually, last time I talked to you, it was exactly one hour ago. So, it took one hour, but the thing is, there is no firewood. The wood shed was completely picked clean. There's a couple of massive logs. I guess someone has tried to burn these with poor results. So, what can I do now in the situation where I can't have a fire to dry my clothes? Am I going to have a miserable night? No, that's not the plan. So first things first, I went to get some water. So I filled up my hydration bladder and drank some for myself. I have two pots here of dirty water. This one goes for dinner and some honey tea perhaps later tonight. And then of course for tomorrow morning, the other one. Next up, I can start making my life here a bit nicer. Then I can take off my wet boots. There's nothing to be done now for these boots. That's just the way things are now this evening. So I'm not going to spend time and energy worrying about those. I think the biggest worry for tonight won't be that my stuff is wet, but there's plenty of mosquitoes because this place is so far down by this pond. Since there is no string or anything inside this roof, so I just put my hiking pole there to hang my socks and 
and also I put on these quite thin long johns and hang my pants there. Let's see if this was a good move or not. At least they feel nice, but these mosquitoes will bite through them. I don't have any mosquito repellent because I thought that that season was over, but apparently I was wrong. But anyway, things are looking better already. Maybe I'll set up the bed next and then start thinking about the food. Yeah, I guess this was bound to happen that I will stumble upon a lean-to without any firewood. And only thing that's a bit uncertain is if this bottle will last me throughout the whole trip. But I'm luckily been able to sleep past nights in a lean-to where there has been firewood. So I'm fairly confident that it will last. But other than that, besides the mosquitoes, things are looking pretty nice. I have my inflatable pad here under me. Sleeping bag is ready. Even my pillow is ready. Boots are there. Coffee is there. Uh, my head net ready for the night. I should get some warm food and honey tea inside of me fairly quickly and uh, evening looks quite nice. Only a slight breeze. Absolutely no sounds. Mm. And can't forget my lemon spread. Life is good on the UKK trail. I mean, it could be better. I could have a big fire there. Stay warm by it and dry my clothes and things like that, but... Well, I think I have done now all my evening chores and maintenance stuff and... There's really nothing else for me now than to perhaps charge GoPro and phone batteries, things like that. And just laying in my sleeping bag slowly warming up those wet socks. <laughs> and I just realized that I think I promised that I will talk more about my trail plans and things like that, but I didn't. <laughs> well, I'll leave that for tomorrow morning then. I'll see you guys then. Good night. Good morning all. It's a bit chilly morning. I tried to take a look at my temperature meter here, but it is so fucked up that it's hard to show, but it is just above zero according to that. I put my kettle there on the fire and sleeping bags are, not sleeping bag and liner are there. Drying up and slowly getting woken up to a new day. So the plan today is to go to Paliakka Strict Nature Reserve. And it's one of the few strict nature reserves that's open to public. So there should be some nice old forests. And uh, trail should be of course in excellent condition because you are not allowed to walk there in any other places than on the trail. Plan is to head there, check that place out. Do a bit of a loop in there and then probably spend the night in um, one of the fanciest shelters I've ever spent the night in. But the problem is that it's in the middle of a mire, <laughs> of course, and uh, I hope that the duck boards are in good shape, but I'm not sure about the facilities, if there's ability to get any water, if it's like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what kind of mire it is, so I will probably have to do some water restocking just in case before I get there, but we'll see that then. Paljakka 12, although this says Paljakka 11 and Kungas Kierros. Pirun Kirkko, this is where I'm going next, seven kilometers away. And uh, Väärän Särkkä, 
UKK route. Hepo Köngäs, 11 kilometers, Köngäs kierros. Yppykän lampi, okay. And then lean to where I was. Let's see about this, <laughs> this map. Okay, great. This is exactly what I want to show it. Väärä lampi, where I spent the night. And I'm now in this crossroads. And the UKK trail, the main trail would go up here to somewhere there. But I'm now taking this route to south, doing this loop, which is the strict nature reserve, and then coming from somewhere here and probably staying the night here. Remember from Jurassic Park 1, where the guy didn't know which way the sign was supposed to point. Well, I came from down there, and if you look at this, it now points to go right. But luckily, I just checked the map, and I need to go left. So, Yes, what a great looking bridge. I think I'm just gonna go there and step over. But this is ridiculous. <laughs> As you can see, I'm again really in the thick of it. All right, let's go. Ooh. And there we go. Piru Kirko. 300 meters. I've been now walking all over these rocks for a while and I have to say I'm not exactly sure where's the Pirun Kirkko supposed to be. So Pirun Kirkko translates to Devil's Church. And usually it refers to some big or perhaps a bit strange looking dark rock or cliffside, things like that. And there's a stream down there. And it's hard to see with all these trees, but when walking over there as well, it's very, very steep everywhere as well on that side. There's another angle. Cool stairs. I mean, look at this. Um, oh. Oh. Okay, do not touch the railings. Oh boy. Well, this explains it. Route to Pirunkirkka has been changed. So I'm here now. That is off limits. New. Route is probably the one that I actually took to there, so I would have had to go back and then here. Oh, now I know. Believe it or not, this sun is really heating me up, so I'm probably, <laughs> or not probably, but I'm going to take off my jacket and put on like a long sleeved t shirt because with just this t shirt, I will get too cold. But with a long sleeve t shirt on top of this, I should be fine. There are so many fallen trees everywhere. 
seems like most of these are fairly recent and it's got me thinking that there was recently a big storm that hit Finland. It did hit these parts and at least that would make sense and looking at all the storm damage around. And that's the sign for the nature park Luonnonpuisto. And this is the Ilveskota. Then let's see. Nice stone floor, big fireplace in the middle. But not for me this time. I will be heading this way, making this loop. So I've been coming from up there. Now we're right at the bottom. You can hear the water streaming down. And uh, I'm going to have to climb on top of this massive hill, which is the main reason why I'm here. Well, that was quite a climb. But now, from the depths of the Devil's Church, I've come to witness this. That is Leili Lampi, also known as Taivaan Peili, which translates to the Mirror of Heaven. Quite poetic, all in all. In terms of the scenery itself so far, it has been quite riddled with that same storm damage. Very very wilderness-like, I would say. All in all, I guess the most defining characteristic of this forest area is that despite it being spruce forest mainly, it's somehow less closed in, less damp, a bit more open. And of course the spruce themselves are a bit different here as well. Right, I've had my lunch now, already packing up things. A couple of folks came here and had lunch with me, so I didn't film anything, but that nature trail loop turned out to be longer than expected. At some point I was thinking that, man, this loop cannot take this long, like no way, it should be five and a half kilometers. And then I double checked my map and my GPS and turns out paper map had a shorter trail, one that I was sort of looking forward to complete and <laughs> GPS had two different trails and uh, I was walking the longer one. To my defense, the longer one was the one that was marked. So I guess at some point the trail has just changed a bit. I've been by this campfire site. There's Päivätupa behind me, so literally day hut, mostly meant for cross-country skiers to come here, warm up a bit, maybe have some snacks, some lunch, coffee and stuff, and then head back out. Those are not meant for overnight stays. I filled up my hydration bladder in case there is no good water source where I'm heading. And I checked my GPS and I've already done over 20 kilometers today. So it was high time for lunch, but also I was not necessarily expecting this day to be this long. Let's see, one step at a time. I'm hopping on yet another trail. I think this is the fourth one today, marked with orange, called Paliakan Polku, I believe. It feels kind of strange after following, what, four and a half days, blue markings, Blue trail markings. Now I have to like constantly switch and really focus, thinking that what is the color I am now trying to see painted on the trees. So the next few kilometers, orange. Not blue, not red, not brown, but orange. 
just 100 meters ago, there was no trail to follow. Nothing on the ground, no signs anywhere. And now this. And now I'm going to the final trail section of today. Notice the red color. And I believe this is now the same red color I followed this morning with the blue UKK trail. So this has to be then Göngaskierros. It's a big loop trail, maybe 60 kilometers or something like that. That circles around the whole Paljakka area. And uh, in case you're wondering, why I'm walking so slowly, well, back on duck boards. Oh boy. Here we go. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. And look at that. It's the same as far as I can see. There it is, I can see it. Jouten Suon Kota, name of this place, and indeed part of Kungas Kierros. Now, if I can only <laughs> make it all the way here. Wow, it's quite an awesome looking place. Yep, I think I'll manage for the night. <laughs> 31.3 kilometers. Well, I can always wish that tomorrow will be shorter. I guess it takes over, well, something like half a day tomorrow to get back to UKK route, but that's the tomorrow's problem. Now, I will have to still check if there's any firewood, that would be nice. All right, so between the almost empty firewood shed and whatever is laying here under the benches, I managed to get some stuff, that, but mostly it's quite big or frankly just rotten. So I put some of the, now there, there was already some half burnt and the, I'm waiting for the flames to die a bit and trying to get some embers going for this evening. Also, again, stuff ready for tomorrow morning. But good thing that I restocked water because there isn't any obvious, obvious water sources. Of course, the mire itself is wet, but you cannot always tell that by just looking at the map. And um, yeah, all this place needs is someone to take a shovel and dig a small hole, that would be enough. That would be a good enough water source. Of course not clean, but an easier way to get water. I really like my admin table here, full of wet socks mainly. I still need to fill this kettle for morning. I just put my water there to boil. It should boil really soon. I'm charging again devices and I have these gloves here because these are of course the gloves that I use to handle you know, hot pots and the fire in general. Like I mentioned about the day huts or päivätupa, this place is also most likely used a lot more during the winter. I think the cross-country skiing tracks then go right there in front of this place, so I would imagine that this gets then restocked for wood and things like that when there is enough of snow for snowmobiles to come in and resupply this place. I'm happy about this decision, happy about today. Nice to charge some batteries, although this type of day would have been a lot better if it would have happened in the middle of this trip and not now, but I'll take it anyway. 
Tomorrow should be still full hiking day. And then there's the final day left. And uh, that's only a short foot march, basically, early in the morning. In many ways, this feels super weird. This little slice of civilization. In order to appreciate life's little things, all you have to do is to spend five days outside. I guess this is it then for tonight. Not gonna lie, I have been enjoying this. <laughs> but I guess I will go now to the inside my sleeping bag and watch this fire to die down for the night. Tomorrow then, new trails, new destinations. Should be once again an interesting day ahead. See you all then. Good morning all. The night was quite warm and uneventful, as it's supposed to be. So, just to be clear, I didn't burn firewood all night long. I had stuff ready for the morning and put the fire up just now to boil some water and get some final bits of heat. And I'm not adding any firewood to that original stack either. Goodbye, warm and cozy cottage. And hello to the damp bog. Clearly my theory that the trail should be in better shape around here, around Paljakka and this whole Gönges and other trails that are here. But that has not been the case so far, at least in terms of the duck boards. They have been quite in quite bad shape and trail markings and how well the trail is established in the terrain is also questionable at times. The good thing is that during this trip I've gotten used to it. <laughs> when I get back to the UKK trail today it's probably going to be more or less the same. A lot of spider webs in the morning. <sighs> Let's not sink in the this. Maybe here? Oh, there's something. Ugh. I knew that this section would be the probably the wettest part of this trail today, but this is ridiculous. I will have to try to jump over there, and then somehow maybe there, and no idea how to get sort of around this. There's some type of bushes growing there, so I try to bend those and get over there, and then that uphill begins. This is why it doesn't matter that much how dry your boots get during the night. this bridge and then I should be back on UKK trail. A lot of signs <laughs> pointing everywhere. UKK route both ways. That's the way I'm going and 
looking at the ground, it's going to be wet. But first, let's get some lunch. Lunch done. On my paper map, this lean to is actually a bit further down there. And uh, it would have been better because, at least on, on that map, it looks to be closer to that small river, so I could have gotten some lunch water from there, but I think I'll manage most of this afternoon trail will follow I think it's that river or whatever river that is running down to so I will have later on plenty of access to water so that's not a problem but this morning the trail has been Fairly easy to follow, but quite overgrown, as you have seen. And in its current condition, I wouldn't recommend that Gungas Hierros for anyone to go through. It's a big loop, so it is a tempting hiking route, but it is just in so rough shape, especially the duck boards. Well, that was a snappy lunch break. So, Hyryn Salmi, 14 kilometers. Hyryn Salmi is my goal or finish line, and today I aim to get as close as possible. By the way, blue markings again, good to be following those. So, if my goal is only 14 kilometers away, why am I not going there already today? I would have plenty of time to do that. Well, the thing is that I'm moving with public transport <laughs> and uh, the last bus, so the absolute final bus that goes from Hyrynsalmi to Kajaani uh, leaves 9.30 in the morning and that's the final bus of the day. So today I'm aiming to get as close to Hyrynsalmi as possible. So tomorrow morning I can wake up quite early and make the final kilometers then to Hyrynsalmi to catch that 9.30 bus in the morning. And uh, there is one lean to, again according to my maps, that's quite close to Hyrynsalmi, maybe six kilometers or something away. So that's where I'm headed today. And this is it, the mighty Vortikka. A giant L-shaped deep rocky canyon completely in the middle of forest for, well, no apparent reason, looking at it now. No water or anything flowing at the bottom. It's one of those places where you have to come and see it in person. But this trail goes in a very nice spot just at the edge of this cliff or this whole formation. I think this place has like several names. Vortica or Vorlokki or something like that. It's an interesting sight to see. Also, I think this was my final big hill to climb and now I'm going then back down to follow that river. And I can only hope that the forest will stay like this for the rest of the trip. Good, nice trail, which is also rather dry. But I am aware, that I just said, I will start going downwards and closer to the river. And both of those things mean 
that it is going to get wet before this is over. Apparently now there has been enough blue paint because there's these three re trees in a row marked and then separate little pole there and the tree just behind that one as well. I'm telling you, these markings have been all over the place this trip. Sometimes you cannot see a mark in hundreds of meters or even more and then sometimes there's like five in a row. So I don't know what's the logic behind all that. All right, I guess this is the river then. Now it's just following the trail alongside it. These things are not even attached to anything. And over grow. Jeez. One last obstacle, you can maybe see the trail is indeed going through here, but not a blue mark in sight. Right, this is it. Not bad view. Decent looking. Lean to, I would say, some firewood here as well. But I have to see, I doubt there is an axe if this is a popular spot. I, I'm looking at the roads, it should be pretty easy to drive all the way here. Bring your own axe as well. 24.4 kilometers, so a bit easier day today. I figured that since there's now some daylight, I could talk a bit about my clothing. If you have been following me on Instagram, you know that I recently started working with this company called Kelly Clothing, who specializes in merino wool garments. And this, this t-shirt, that I've been wearing constantly and haven't taken it off once during this trip is from them. This, it's quite thin. I really like the color as well. Merino wool and this warm layer as well is from Kelly. It's called Luppo Jacket. And uh, I'm now testing this and will be testing it probably for a long time and making a review then during winter how this performs. As you can see it's a bit loose fit. I bought Excel just to get long sleeves and the possibility of putting up more layers underneath this then during the winter. I've been also using their tube scarf and generally speaking merino wool as a first layer is, is very nice against the skin. This t-shirt, especially truly a workhorse. I don't really notice that I'm wearing it. These don't smell, although I've been using them throughout the whole week. All in all, choosing the right clothing during a trip like this, where everything is extremely wet, it's, uh, it is really important to get that thing right. And I've been happy now testing Kelly Clothing Merino Wool products. And now I can truly say that I am not just representing them, but believing them. But that's it. Ad break over. 
I will think about that wood situation if I want to try something with the fire or not. I'm not really cold, so that's not a problem and I'm less wet than I have been in previous days, so that's good. All right, I managed to scavenge some smaller pieces and there was enough birch bark to get things going and apparently even those quite wet logs get going once you get good enough base and I went to fill up that pot completely with water and also filled half of the hydration bladder I think that will be more than enough for drinking water for this evening and as well as then for tomorrow morning March <laughs> Last cheese and last of my dehydrated minced beef and the last of my bread. All just as planned. Although I do have extra food as I always do have with me just in case. I plan to have these treats, so to speak, so cheese, um, extra beef, bread, things like that. I calculated that I will have those with every meal until this point. So just as planned. I think I'm fairly close to that 170 kilometer mark. So tomorrow morning there will be roughly six more kilometers and I need to be in Hurusalmi at that gas station by 9.30. I just recharged my headlamp, although I would imagine that if I now wake up, let's say around six, by the time I get going, there should be already some daylight. So it's not like I will be going in pitch black darkness. Good morning everyone. It is still quite dark. Probably as dark as it seems on the camera, but as we know, it will get better by the minute. Now it's simply time for multitasking. So I got my clothes on and water is coming up, so let's back up this leaf system and then when it, it is done, I should probably already have some boiling water so I can start breakfast. Oh, and by the way, if you are in a similar situation where you have to wake up at a certain time, put an alarm, and you're sleeping outside in a forest or whatever, and maybe you haven't done that before, make sure to have some redundancies because at least myself, I put on alarm from my watch as well as my phone. Usually my phone is off, but I kept it on last night and then even turned the vibration alarm on on my phone. And I woke up to that vibration. I didn't hear my watch. I didn't hear my phone at all. When you're curled up inside the sleeping bag, all the sounds get muffled so much that you don't really hear them. But the vibration woke me up, luckily enough. Right, hiking pole. And it's good to be extra careful when in a bit of a dark still to see that I haven't left anything, but I think I'm good to go. All right. <laughs> Let's do this. At least the path should be properly marked. Ooh, quite visible. So nice and quiet when I got a bit further away from that running water. The river still goes down there, but it's very calm. Very quiet forest.
feels weird to end this video, let alone this hike by walking into a town, but here I am in Hyrynsalmi. I just want to say it's been quite an adventure walking through the wet, dark forests of Finland. And uh, thank you all for watching all the way through, sticking with me through the ups and downs, highs and lows, and wets and dries. You've been watching Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. Please leave any comments, questions down below. I'm happy to hear your thoughts about this type of a longer backpacking trip. I will see you all in the next one.